Happy Socktober, y'all! I know this is not the normal thing you see, but we're gonna be closing up a toe. All right. I hope that it stays in focus. All right. So when you close up the toes, it's either on the top or on the bottom, and it's across the widest amount of the stitches, right? So because it's a half half. And so we're gonna close up the toe. When I first got my machine, I didn't realize that I could do this right from the waist yarn. And I was um, putting my needles on, or my stitches onto needles and kitchenering it with knitting needles, but you don't have to do that. All right, first, here is, I'm gonna do the other toe of this sock. So here's what you have. There's the toe, and then you're closing up what I call the Muppet Mouth. I think it looks like a Muppet Mouth. So I apologize if I say that, and now you think it looks like a Muppet Mouth, too. So we left that long tail of our waist yarn. You're going to thread it onto a darning needle. And the motion is... The first, the first step is one different than every other step you're going to do. So I'm left-handed. I need to turn this around, and it's just easier. Okay. So, this is your last stitch here, this one, okay? And then these are all the half, this way is half, and then from this way, half, okay? We're going to start, though, on the opposite side of where that last stitch is coming from, which is probably also where your waist yarn is. That's almost the case, like the tail of your waist yarn. That's pretty much always the case. So, it's the same motion, but we're going to do the whole sock. So the first step though is you're going to go across the street, right? So across the street to the neighbor and go up. Okay. We're going to remedy that because we're going to go through each of these twice. All right. Except for this first one. You're not going through that one twice. So pull up. Okay. Now you're going to go back to the, the stitch that it was coming from, that it was. This is that loop that we pulled on. You go down on the same side of the street and then up in the neighbor on the same side. Okay? So then you're going to go back across. You're going to go down in that one that we came up out of. That was the only time we came up or did one stitch at a time. Every time it's a two stitch motion. Okay. Now we're going to go cross back across the street, go down into the one that you came up out of. Okay. And then go up into the neighbor. So from here, it's going to start pulling. You can start to see it pulled together. Okay. Go across the street down and up. I hope I'm doing justice to the other videos that are out there because there are other really good videos on kid string toes. Okay. Go back across the street. This is the one we came out of last. See? So we're going back into it because you're knitting essentially every stitch twice down and up. Okay. It's starting to pull it together. Down and up. Cross the street, down. I don't know why I say cross the street. <sighs> it's okay. All right, so now you, when you stick your thumb in there, you can see there's our stitches, okay? They're starting to form. Sorry if you hear my family. They were outside playing and now they're coming in. Some people hold it together different you hold it together different ways right so whatever is easy for you I know sometimes I hold it like this that way I know I'm going back and forth so you can do so we were on this side we're going across going down and up okay and then across down I can do this sometimes in one swift motion, and it just depends on if I, how I'm holding it, if the stitch is tighter, etc. Okay? Go across, down, up. 
My loop always. Oh boy. Let's use them for a second. Down. Up. Okay, try not to catch your waist yarn. That will create issues when you're trying to take your waist yarn off. Alright, so here's now what we have. We're going to go all the way across. All right. Going down into the last the last stitch you went into. Up. Down. I guess meaning down as in the end of the fabric is at the top. So going back up towards the end of the fabric. Okay, going down into the fabric and back up out of the fabric. And my family is beating on the window. I don't know what is happening. Ay, ay, ay. I apologize that <laughs> sometimes this is real life and I can't always help that they, you know, they're living here too. Okay, all right, so it's coming together, and we're just going to keep going. So I'm just going to keep showing the whole thing. So sometimes I hold it like this with my finger under it on that side, down up. So I'm going through both at the same time. And then I would switch and go down up. That one for me, the back side is always harder when I'm doing it that way. This side, I feel like I can maneuver my needle easy, easier. <clears throat> I guess a curved tip needle. Some people probably use a curved tip needle. So down in the fabric and up. So it's always going down into the tube and then coming back out of the tube. So going down in the tube, coming out of the tube. down up like I said if you have trouble following my video there I have the Judy Q linked down below I believe Earl Backer has one Karen from CSM C CMS love circular sitting circular sock machine love CSM love and then I believe Jamie Mayfield also has one on well, Sock TV, you only get, if you don't pay for it, you only get to see, like, the last so many videos. But Jamie Mayfield also has her own channel on YouTube. <clears throat> she has a lot of great videos that I've watched where she shows winding yarn on a cone. So, really, there's, there's great resources out there. Now, you don't want to, like, jerk on it. You're not pulling it super tight. You want it to be as even as possible. So, it doesn't look like... A jog in the fabric. Sorry, I'm trying to get that one is. I told you that the up one on that side is always hard for me. So down in the last one, up in the new one, the neighbor. Going across, going down in the last one, and up in the neighbor. Now, when we get to the end, it does get a little more difficult. Seeing all those stitches down and up. I've kitchenered a lot of toes closed, so don't feel like frustrated the first couple times you do it. I mean, you're going to feel frust frustrated. I know I did. But once you get it, you got it. You got it. I hope this view works out. For everybody it looks okay on my camera I have my camera kind of in front of my face a little to the side looks like it's staying in focus well enough also again thank you to everybody and then recommendations that people have been giving asking to see certain things I've been trying to show a lot of different things here so I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in Oops, I just pulled my darning needle off. Okay. 
<clears throat> I always leave, I always cut a very long tail. If that gets difficult for you, just judge how much you've been cutting for your tail and just cut less. Or if you're not, well, obviously, if you're not cutting enough, that's not an easy remedy because then you're putting an extra piece of yarn. If that was the case, I would probably start with um, my a, a separate, a whole separate strand. If you don't think it's long enough, like by accident, say you cut it prematurely, you cut because you're like, oh, cut it and you cut it and it was like really short. I honestly would probably use a whole separate string strand because I wouldn't want a kitchener halfway through with the cut strand and then weave in all those extra stitches from that, all those extra ends. I would just want to kind of weave in. I mean, it's the same amount of ends. I guess I just wouldn't want them, I don't know, all in the, the middle of the toe. So down and up. Again, I know a lot of people that they kind of hold that Muppet mouth kind of like this. So they can see, see how you can see all your stitches. This side is just harder for me that way. So down and up. You'll find a rhythm. We all do. And maybe the needle I'm not using isn't the greatest. I don't want a super sharp needle because I don't want to split stitches really badly. But maybe it's not sharp enough. I don't know. Who knows? See, but then I start squishing it too hard. <laughs> and then I'm kind of making a mush. So that's when I kind of break it back open and... Not break it, but pull it back apart so I can kind of see what I'm doing. So down into the tube and back up out towards the end of the fabric. Down and out towards the waist yarn. So like I said, every live stitch that's on your waist yarn is essentially getting passed through twice. Once going down into the tube and then once coming up. Well, I guess it's up first and then down, but either way, um, you get what I'm saying. So we're getting near the end. This is where it gets harder. And I do, I also do a little extra at the end and I'll show you guys what I do. So just bear with me. I know it's been 12 minutes to show you how to close a toe, but we're doing the whole toe. I'm not editing this. I wanna show you and just keep going. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. You gotta just really pay attention. I have definitely missed a stitch and I've had to like grab it with the tail afterwards. So it is harder to see what's going on. Okay, but this was my last one. This is the new one. And if you have to, if you have to pull that to see where it was coming from, you can tug it a little. It's, it's okay. So down through that one. Back up through this one. Down. This is the last one. Then back up. Okay. And now we've we've went through all of them. Now this one you only got once, and I believe this one only got once. I can't. This one got twice. Once. Ugh, whatever. Now what I do, I don't take my needle off yet. I put my hand into the sock. I go and I take the my extra my tail and I put it into the Muppet mouth <laughs> into my Kitchener and my hand and I grab the needle and I pull all of it through okay this is essentially making it easier to take off your waist yarn so now we're gonna take this waist yarn off okay I'm just gonna make a pile I'm not gonna make it a pretty ball and waste your time I'll do that later If you caught if you caught your waist yarn, it would get really hard to pull in a certain spot. Okay, so here's where we kitchenered. Okay, looks pretty. I'm gonna take my tail back out, but I am going to put my hand. I'm gonna thread my needle again, and I'm gonna go through those stitches one more time on that end. Let me cut this tail. It's awfully long. Like I said, I. 
I do leave my tails extra long. All right. Now, when we did this, it kind of leaves that. So what I like to do, I don't do anything when I'm with the waist yarn still on. I feel like it's easier. All the stitches have been caught, so I just feel like it's easier to look at this. Okay? So what I'm going to do is that yarn came through here. So essentially, this was the last one. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to put it back through that last one. Okay. And then I'm going to go, this is where it came from. I'm going to go back into this one. And then it go, I'm pulling it into the sock. And now I'm going to turn the sock inside out. So I can weave in my end. So the needle's still on it. Sorry. All right. So here's where we Kitchener's across. Right? Looks pretty good. And I just weave... Oh, sorry, that wasn't really in the camera. I apologize. All right. Now I just do through the bumps, every other bump. Okay, like that. And then I go over one or a few and just go back up every other bump. This is net on the top of the toe. I don't feel it ever. Then I wear them and I just make like I weave across. And obviously, when you wash them, the wool eventually will just like, unless it's a super wash, I mean, it'll felt into itself a little. I do it a few times three, four, I don't know, five, however you feel to make it secure. Weave in your ends how you feel like it. You don't have to do what I do. Again, we're the boss of our knitting. So you can clip that, and now your toe is Kitchenered. And at the top, if you did the hung hem, I'll show you how I weave that into in case anybody's curious. Um, it's just how I do it. Again, do it how you want. All right, so this was the hung hem. What I do is I just go through where the hung hem was because there's two stitches on it you can tell I just do it a few times ice cream man's coming <laughs> if you can hear that I don't know if you can hear that or not right you know however many you feel like and then I just go into the hem into the double fabric push it out through the top Pull it a little tighter so when it, it'll go right back into that hem. Okay, right into the double fabric. We'll turn it back out, inside out, right side out. And I'll show you. Again, here is my toe. All done. All Kitchenered. Um, there are tips. Sometimes people get like dog ears on the end. I don't feel like mine do that, so I don't do anything different on my machine, but there are a few videos out there for no dog ears on the end, so if you are getting dog ears, definitely do a YouTube search for CSM and dog ears, and that's it. And this is just the, sh the angular toe that I do. It's not the rounded, this isn't the rounded one, so this is the shape of the angular toe, which is the same shape as the heel. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and happy Socktober, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!